The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat, peer to peer. Good morning. Good morning. Oh shit! Looks like the space ended. I don't know why that happened. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, all right, we'll just just keep on going. Typical okay. Twitter issues. They should be on YouTube anyways for the charts. Just kidding. I don't want to tell anyone on spaces what they should do with the <laughs> social media. <laughs> okay, so we've got uh, Monero on the weekly here. I uh, got another weekly clo close coming up. Uh, actually, a monthly close here in just a couple days. Um, just wanted to kind of keep the big picture in mind. Um, you'll notice that we've got these uh, standard deviation bands that we talked about last week. So the blue up here at the top and the, the orange at the bottom. These white clusters uh, is moving average. And overall in the Monero US dollar price, the uh, the moving average cluster, the very long term moving averages is kind of what seems to have um, where price seems to have stopped. Hypothetically, um, just in terms like a pure wave magic analysis, that's what I call this kind of wavy blue and orange line stuff, call it wave magic. Uh, anyways, hypothetically, you could go down to the bottom here, but fundamentally it, it seems like there's price support here from Monero. Um, I'd be really surprised if we ever got down to $70. That would have to be like some crazy brutal bear market across the board. So um, yeah, let's zoom in a little bit, go to the daily, and uh, maybe we can clear some of these lines. Um, there's not too much relevant right here for the uh, for the wave magic, the standard deviation analysis. Basically, just hanging out in this top cluster. Um, wouldn't be surprising to see us come down to this long term line. So we'll clear clear all the uh, the colorful stuff. Um, but yeah, again, so we've got kind of like this big um, this white line right here. Uh, it wouldn't be surprising at all at some point to try and touch this line again. We had like this fake out to the downside. I don't know what that was about. Probably just, uh, you know, probably just cleaning out shorts, cleaning out longs to both sides. So that's a common thing. So something that wrecks traders is, um, you know, the actual move will be one direction and then they'll clear out to the opposite direction first, uh, kind of like market maker stuff. There's uh, there's always a bigger whale out there usually. Um, so yeah, right now there's not too much exciting. Not much has really happened with price for really hardly anybody. Um, but you can see there's kind of like a little bit of a triangle forming here. Um, but yeah, nothing really exciting with the Monero US dollar price. Uh, one thing I kind of wanted to reiterate was the, uh, that big inverse head and shoulders that's happening on the Monero dominance, um, seems to be playing out. Would be wonderful to see this thing kind of come up here and then break this line. That would basically be the confirmation you want to see that, um, that it's very likely for this head and shoulders to play out. So uh, yeah, we'll just we'll just have to keep an eye on this. This is the weekly chart, so it's kind of a, a long-term chart. Um, we've got the uh, Monero Bitcoin ratio. Again, kind of zoomed out, uh, end of the month. Take a little bit of a zoomed out picture here. We're basically riding this, this lower, uh, lower support. And you can see that um, from when Monero launched, we're basically at that same level. And we overall, like it's been up, it's been down up down we've basically been centered around the monero launch uh, opening price level um now for really for like three or four years which is slightly you know i mean i feel like in terms of what monero is and does and and the organic adoption it's, ex it's experiencing i feel like we should have a higher price but uh, you know relative to bitcoin um, but if we zoom in so we're on the daily now we had drawn this line before uh hang on one second here we go we had drawn this line uh you could you could draw this line a number of ways, right? So you could you could put this uh, the top of it right there. We could also try and draw the line uh, to look more like this, perhaps. Um, so this is what I mean about drawing lines. Like you've got to understand that they can be dubious, and that um, it depends on like which time frame you look at. Like you could look at the four hour. You might want to draw the line different if you look at the four hour versus the daily versus the weekly. Um, this overall to me, again, like we talked about last week, like this looks kind of like a, a plausible bottoming pattern here. These kinds of patterns can just continue to, to chop sideways for a long period of time. I would hope that um, somewhere around October timeframe, maybe even September timeframe, that Monero starts popping versus Bitcoin. Uh, again, I do think that the Gox coin being released could be uh, something that drives that. And that's something that I've said for a while that that to really drive a sustainable run versus Bitcoin uh, and really in dominance overall that, that we need to see some kind of like fundamental event take place. So, um, you know, maybe uh, maybe that combined with the fact that um, they they released it's not random X, but they released a CPU algorithm um, to stop the Tor DDoS attacks. 
So basically, if Tor is getting congested and the servers are getting overloaded, too many requests, they start um, they start requiring some kind of CPU proof of work. So they used um, basically RandomX, uh, a derivative of that, in combination with some other things. So anyways, the point is that um, if dark nets are starting to um, really come back online, there's the chance uh, that, uh, that that demand could also drive a little bit uh, Monero demand here. So... Yeah, we just got to wait and see. Hopefully this thing can eventually um, pop to the upside. It still could be a couple months, uh, but we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, we'll look at the XMR versus Ethereum as well. And um, this is a daily daily chart right here, looking again at the wave magic. Um, this should be somewhat familiar in terms of, you know, the way that we've drawn these lines out uh, over the past, you know, few months, really, uh, really almost over the past year now. So um, yeah, we kind of broke down uh, and then finally broke out through this channel. Right now, the reason I wanted to show you guys this chart in terms of wave magic is that uh, we still kind of have like this lower cluster down here uh, that you could plausibly visit. I was kind of expecting when things were down here, I really was expecting to come make a visit down to this spot. But, um, you know, it just uh, luckily Monero just kind of stopped, decided it wanted to have some strength. Um, it, you definitely think that this thing can, can return back to this spot as well, whether it comes down first, um, or whether it goes up first, I'm, I'm not really convinced, but if we're going to compare it to what we were talking about with Bitcoin, we might say, you know, to expect during October, September for this thing to start going up. So, um, again, you know, just, just have to watch it. Uh, the divergence is not much has happened, um, kind of been up and down o overall. I think for the past week, we've seen more up than down, at least on Binance. Um, although I think Qcoin is starting to become more relevant. Uh, we have to, we have to keep a careful eye on Binance and the whole, um, exchange situation because Binance is kind of under attack and, um, it's not necessarily looking great for them. Uh, I think that they're probably planning their exits. They're probably like the the crypto cabal, the suits are probably planning to um, really move things to some other exchange at some point here, uh, just in case the the trial for Binance doesn't work out because they've got quite a number of things going on. Um, uh, we can look at the broader crypto market quickly, and uh, we'll see here's the, the Bitcoin chart. Um, I took the liberty with trying to draw this chart slightly differently um, than we had it drawn up before. I added some new lines. So obviously this is a big picture chart, right? This is the bull market, whole bear market happened. And then we're kind of, it looks to me, so every now and then I, I erase my lines and I redraw them. I just, you know, I don't want to get tunnel vision. Um, and it does look to me like you could call this a rising triangle, uh, effectively what we have here, or sorry, a, a rising wedge. Um, you could you could very easily um, call this a wedge structure. And typically these things break down. Um I wouldn't say that we're in like kind of this big macro bullish environment. Like, I mean, yes, it's bullish. Yes, the macro turned around um, late last year. Uh, but right now, you know, we're kind of seeing signals that that are really giving me pause to wonder how much longer this can continue. I know I've been saying this now for probably the last month uh, that I'm, I'm becoming concerned how long this can continue. I, I really, you know, you really wanted to see this breakout right here. You didn't want to see all these wicks and then and then come back to the downside. Um, you really wanted to see some kind of some kind of breakout in that regard. Um, you might notice this line right here is also kind of a new line that I drew, um, which cuts through the uh, the November top. That might seem a little dubious, and and maybe it is, but um, it is something that you can do with lines that they they are significant uh, fairly often. So we'll drop down here into the daily really quick, and you can see a little bit more clearly why you might want to draw this kind of wedge this wedge pattern. Maybe we can move that line up just slightly. But um, yeah, I mean, looking at this, it's again, on balance of probabilities, these kinds of wedges tend to break down. If we were in like some major kind of bullish scenario where the Fed is like cutting rates and their their balance sheet is increasing, right? You might say, OK, hey, this thing is ready to break to the upside, but the macro doesn't exactly look like that. So um, we had the Fed meeting last week, uh, like we talked about, they raised rates a quarter point, which is exactly what we wanted to see. Um, Honestly, like we don't want these markets to get out of control now, unless you just really love inflation, <laughs> unless you just really love paying more for rent and more for cars and more for everything. Um, you know, you, you really want to see things kind of just chop sideways here. Uh, we can still make money trading um, in a sideways market. You know, you just have to understand the big picture that you're in. Um, but yeah, I mean, the thing I don't want to see is more inflation personally. Uh, that's just that just gets annoying eventually. So anyways, the Fed raised rates. Um, this is the uh, obviously the the. Uh, yield chart for overall, you know, the one year, five year, 10 year, all the way to the 30 year. And then the overnight rate is the the white step function line that you see here. Um, so 
They um, One thing that's important to note here that uh, Jay Powell said is that real rates are now positive. What that means is that the Fed rates are now above the inflation rate. Uh, so we can go take a look at the inflation rate really quick. Can we? Uh, where did I put it? Probably here. Here we go. Okay. So the inflation rate is, uh, the CPI is in um, white. Yeah, the CPI is in white. So um, it's down at 3% now. The Fed rates are like 5% or 5.5%. Um, and then even the core inflation is now down below 5%. So um, real rates are now positive, right? So that's actually something that hasn't happened for quite a long time, um, where the Fed rates are actually higher than the inflation rate. So um, that's an interesting thing that's happened. Um, like we talked about with the balance sheet, the balance sheet has is, is come down. Like You'll notice that um, we, we've talked about this chart for a while. That's March um, where uh, you know it kind of bottomed and then they had to expand the liquidity. And then we said, hey, this is going to come back down. Those are short-term loans. And the Fed is continuing to sell off their balance sheet. And that was one thing they noted at the meeting. Um, and they're going to continue to sell off this balance sheet. Now, in the big picture, you know, let's keep the big picture in mind. And, and uh, some crazy event, I don't remember what it was exactly, but in 2020, like something happened where they just massively expanded that balance sheet. So, um, you know, big picture, like there's still a lot of liquidity in the markets, which is why I'm not of the, you know, crash and die, crash and burn deflation thesis. But, um, you know, this is enough, to, right, to have a pullback, right? It is enough to eventually kind of weigh on the markets and keep it from making significant new all-time highs. Um, we won't look really at global liquidity today. I, I'm seeing there's different scripts here where they take into account like M2 money supply and balance sheets of different banks and they put them all together and they tell you what the global liquidity situation looks like. Um, but they don't, none of these scripts say the same thing. So that makes me nervous that um, people have different methodologies. So I'm going to have to like dig deep into this. Um, hopefully I can get to it this week and uh, kind of come up with my own script. You know, I don't know why necessarily my script would be better than anyone else's, but um you know, I just, I like to verify things for myself and maybe I can compare what these other guys are doing. And, um, other than that, um, there's, I guess not too much more to talk about. We're trying to keep it quick today. Um, oh, dollar index is probably important. We should talk about that. So, um, we had like this violent drop, like we talked about, and, uh, we said, Hey, more gains are on the way here. Um, and we did see some new highs in the stock market. This could just be like a fake out. Um, right now I I'm not convinced which way the dollar wants to go. I'm, Again, I'm kind of personally of the thesis that we should be looking to August or maybe September for a general top in these markets. Um, I, I'm just really not convinced that there's a whole lot more in the tank here before a significant pullback needs to happen across the board, um, which almost kind of would line up with what we talked about with Monero, as kind of we've talked about since forever, that um, Monero seems to do good during the bear market. Um, fundamentals seem to matter during bear markets. So if we think that there's going to be some kind of movement of Monero towards the upside around the August September time frame, um, well then we you know that might be a signal that that the rest of the markets are going to go down um, in terms of like risk on markets that is you know stock markets crypto etc. Um, and then the dollar index here again I mean this this chart could still go at this point it could go either way right this could have just easily been a fake out um, or it could be like that's like a sign of what's to come where it might kind of do this if you see the dollar index starting to move below this line and hang out below that line, look out below uh, on the dollar index, and that will be a big sign for us that probably um, they're going to run the markets even further. Um, I don't think that's a good idea, again, for inflation, et cetera, for all the reasons we've talked about. I would much rather see the dollar index, again, get into this zone here, stay in this zone, eventually break this line, and that would basically tell us that it's it's time to go up, that the direction here on the dollar index is going to go up. So, um, yeah, that's... Um, that's basically all. That's that's all the like the important things that we need to look at today. So uh, unless there's anything you guys would like to look at, um, that should oh, be. Somebody said in the yeah. comments, "Do we still suspect Binance is shorting XMR with coins they don't actually have?" Hundred percent. Yeah, they um they are fractionally reserved. Um, it seems like over the past say five to six months that they've acquired enough XMR to keep their withdrawals open. Um, but it's kind of like I don't know if y'all ever heard the stories about the old uh, gold vaults, like back in the wildcat banking days, um, what they realized, so people would deposit their gold into the vault, you know, for safety. And what, what these vaults realized is, Hey, we can actually, cause they'll issue a certificate in exchange for that gold. So, okay, we owe you, uh, you know, X amount of gold. They realized they could issue about 10 times more certificates before they would get like some major run, uh, on their vault. So that, you know, they were basically printing fake gold. Um, so I, you know, we, we have all the evidence from really the past couple of years that Binance absolutely has been doing this along with the other exchanges. 
Um, they're not doing it as badly because they're finally, they're meeting uh, withdrawals on a regular basis. We don't see them shut down for days at a time like we did uh, last year, particularly last year, but also in 2021. Um, so yes, it's difficult to believe that they actually acquired their full order book. Why would they do that after um, fractionally reserving for the past couple of years? Um, but it's not as bad as it used to be. So that would be my answer. And that's there. probably only also because they're having to like get rid of Monero completely, right? They're having to like let people get out of that. Yeah. And the countries that they've removed it, um, I don't remember which countries that is. Was it like France and the Netherlands? Netherlands, like yeah. A few, like a handful of European countries. Um, it sounds like the uh, the European Union is, is going to crack down on them here eventually. So um, yeah, it, it could be the case that they are, maybe they are acquiring a little bit more Monero at a time, knowing that that's coming so that they can meet those, those demand, uh, withdrawal demands. It's possible. All right. Your, your theory with, um, dark markets picking back up again, that that's pretty interesting. So, I mean, has there been a lull? Um, well, the, the word on the street on the dark street was that, um, Basically, there was a big DDoS attack against darknet markets really since um, I think it was like the end of last year. And then finally, with the release of CPU proof of work, um, that DDoS attack has subsided. I believe it has subsided. I don't know. I haven't looked into myself personally um, how much darknet markets are picking up. Um, but it sort of, to me, it stands to reason that if darknet markets were having problems due to DDoS attacks um, and shutdowns, you know, th that that uh, we weren't getting a lot of like real usage of Monero in the dark nets. That seemed to be like at least a convenient explanation for some of the, the price drops that we saw in Monero recently, um, or at least the lack of performance that we kind of expected to see um, that even the chart would have suggested that we should have seen. Um, so that was kind of like one of my hypotheses. You couldn't even call it a theory, you know, just a, wild conjecture. But so I'm kind of speculating here, potentially, if this um, DDoS attack is resolved, then perhaps dark net markets are starting to pick up again. Um, one could hope. <laughs> Maybe I don't know, it depends on what they're selling, right? Are they selling freedom? Or are they selling? Um, I don't know, people, right? That's different things. <laughs> get theirs, get theirs. Mm. All right, man. Uh, thank you so much, as always. Thank you. Uh, just, you know, I guess it's more waiting to see what happens. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd... go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I just, I'd like to see some more clarity, particularly on the dollar index. I'd like to see it move to a certain direction. Um, I just like to see a few things kind of show us more clarity. I would hate to just see the markets like crash and burn to the downside and be like, crap, you know, like that. It, it's hard to get out of the market right now. Cause I could, I could plausibly see another higher high um, for, you know, Bitcoin and other coins. Um, but that might not happen, but I would like to just see the signals that show us that we're about to make, you know, a downturn so I can sort of get out of my positions at a higher level <laughs> than a lower level, but that's not necessarily how the market always behaves. So we're not quite back, but it's also not over. <laughs> it, it might, it's not, it's probably not quite over. It's, we, there, there could plausibly be new highs coming, but they, you know, don't, I don't, not like 40 K, 50 K, like 35 K maybe. Yeah. Yeah. How does an alien uh, scenario affect all this? You know, we, uh, <laughs> we get a complete alien reveal. They come down. They're talking with us. Obviously, they're going to adopt Bitcoin and become maximus, bro. Like, they're BTC maxis? No way. No. <laughs> they're. I mean, that's that's. They're very private. They're, they're very Twitter. secretive, right? They don't want anybody to know who they are. I mean, they're they're obviously they're obviously hiding. I, I think they're more Monero Monero maxis, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the more plausible scenario. But I guess I've been reading too much Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one thing, one idea that I had on the alien thing was um, the, the government. So I'm not saying I believe the aliens are here or not, but let's just pretend that they have been for a long time, for thousands of years or whatever. The government waited until no one would actually believe them to finally confess that they've known about the aliens for you know a long time. They're like, nobody's going to believe us now. Let's just tell them about the aliens. And they'll be like, ah, fuck you. We don't believe you anymore. Right. It's at the point where we don't believe anything the government says. And yeah. now it's like they're finally here. <laughs> uh, nice the little irony. reverse sigh up there. They're, they're good, man. They're good. Who's, who's ever writing the script? They know what they're doing. Tricky bastards. Tricky bastards. Can't win. <laughs> All right, buddy. Uh, okay, so talk to you around later. if you can. Uh, but we, have a, we have a lot to talk about. We'll do the news. We'll try to bring everybody up so everybody can chime in on the news if, if you're around for that. Cool. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Let's buddy. Keep...
Thanks, buddy. Thanks, Tux.